Jumping a few years back from Occult, the subject of our previous video, you might recall we mentioned that Koji Shiraishi was working in film prior to his landmark work in the found footage genre. Today, let's accordingly return to an earlier time, with a more straightforward film from this remarkable horror director. Let's look at 2006's shorter project, Dead Girl Walking, a tale of existential dread, zombies, and low-budget filmmaking. Dead Girl Walking was one part of a short series known as Hideshi Hino's Theater of Horror. This project was but one of the horror anthologies popular in early 2000s filmmaking, with Theater of Horror garnering some respectable names during its run. Theater of Horror was, in simplest terms, a series of theatrical, medium-length films which premiered in 2004. All of the films were distributed by Pony Canyon, and the whole set received an American release two years later in 2006. The idea was to give six different directors the chance to work on a shorter film, and have the whole series screened in Japanese cinemas. Aside from Shiraishi, theater of horror films were directed by Mari Asato, who would later work on the Juon franchise, as well as directing the Fatal Frame movie adaptation, Yoshihiro Nakamura, known for Kumo Ona from Dark Tales of Japan, another anthology film we covered some time back, as well as for co-writing Dark Water, Kazuyoshi Kumakiri, director of the earlier project Banquet of the Beasts, Kazuyuki Sakamoto, who served as cinematographer on Jurei, another film released by Koji Shiraishi in 2004, and Kiyoshi Yamamoto, who we all remember for his work on Dad of Light. Given that this is Hideshi Hino's theater of horror, you might find yourself asking just who Hideshi Hino is. This series is given this name thanks to each project being based upon manga penned by Hideishi Hino, a famous and well-respected horror mangaka. Hino has been working since the late 60s, garnering massive respect in his home country. In a way, you could say that Hino is up there with Junji Ito in terms of popularity, though Hino's works are notably less Lovecraftian in style and substance. Hino has also produced some manga based on his life and experiences. After all, his grandfather was a Yakuza, and he and his parents escaped his birthplace in China after Japan's surrender of their imperial claims following World War II. At the start of his lengthy career, Hino published works in the avant-garde manga magazine Garo, among others. These one-shots and short tales paved the way for Hino's series Hino Horror, an eclectic mix of horror stories which, to date, spans over a dozen volumes. Outside of manga, Hino is known primarily for his work writing and directing two of the guinea pig films. Oh, and that's to say nothing of the massive merchandising opportunities from his recognizable creepy cute characters. Today, rather than tackling the entirety of Hideshi Hino's theater of horror, we're going to be specifically looking at one project, that being Koji Shiraishi's Dead Girl Walking. We classified the horror on display here as existential, which we did thanks to the primary question raised by the project. What happens when you're declared dead, but your body refuses to die? This isn't a medical refusal to die, as in the sense of brain death, where brain function ceases but one's body can continue to survive on life support systems. Instead, this is a more fantastical take on the question. Our main character, Yuri, has seen a cessation of all vital signs. Yet she keeps on trucking as though nothing has happened. Any devices which could detect a heartbeat or a temperature will declare her dead, but she's perfectly fine. Well, except for the necrotic segments developing all over her body. As long as we ignore those, she's fine. Rejected by her family following death, it seems that Yuri has no other love in the world but a single flower sitting upon her windowsill. Perhaps she related to the flower, having been cut off at the stem and left to wander in a finite state of life support, much like a flower can live for a time with only water. At the start of the film, Yuri is seen watering her flower one day when she spontaneously dies. That day, a doctor declares her dead, but she wakes up in her bed as though nothing is wrong. In short order, Yuri's family makes no secret that they are done with her. They go so far as to inject her with formaldehyde and suggest that they want to burn her body, which they refer to as a corpse. Even beyond the family, the world has no place for a dead girl walking. A farmer discovers her hiding out in his barn and seeks to immediately vacate her, having no time for a stowaway. 
Lastly, a man who at first appears kindly wants to exploit her. In the process of winning her over to take advantage, he implies that this is not the first incident he's witnessed involving the undead, referring to her as a rare example instead of a complete anomaly. At first glance, Dead Girl Walking doesn't seem like much to write home about. We would argue, however, that the film has a bit to say about Koji Shiraishi's range while providing a fascinating thought experiment. Of primary note here is that just before Noroi, one of the most well-respected found footage horror films of which we are aware, we observe Shiraishi directing a remarkably more traditional horror project. This isn't a slight against Dead Girl Walking, as the project is enjoyable as a short one-off but it denoted how versatile Shiraishi already was as a filmmaker from this early point in his career. Also to note is the style of the project, in a more direct sense. The film's soundtrack, for example, sounds like something out of a late PS1 horror game, which is definitely a plus in our book. Visually, the film provides two styles black and white photography for the portions in which Yuri is dead, and color for when she is alive, with a segment of the film resembling a sideshow echoing the aesthetic of a silent era film. Decisions like these further show Shiraishi's versatility as an artist, as well as the quality of film he would direct once he had more creative freedom. In a more direct way, Dead Girl Walking takes a look at how we treat the dead, in hyperbole of course. For this reason, the movie offers a bit of social commentary, an element we would see return in films like Occult, where Shiraishi explored how individuals and society interact with the mentally ill. Dead Girl Walking argues that we simultaneously want the deceased gone, while also feeling guilty about their passing. This is seen chiefly in how Yuri's parents demand that she shouldn't be alive. They believe that they're being emotionally abused by being disallowed the chance to grieve for her loss. The film also argues that we find the dead repulsive. During Yuri's journey, no one offers to help her. Either the farmer or the family could support her after death, but both reject her directly and violently. Later, a man observing her in a freak show gawks at how rotten she is, yet he keeps staring. Death has made her an other, meaning that she deserves the hate of the living. Whether from hate, disgust, or revulsion, her family isn't much better than the man at the freak show. They cover her room in plastic to try and cordon her off from the family, and to keep the stink of death from seeping into the house. What's more, Dead Girl Walking shows that we wish to exploit the deceased. If we don't directly reject or hate them, the film seems to argue that we must want something from them. The kindly man who takes her in appears to be the only person to act decently towards her. His ulterior motive, however, is exposed when he takes her in only to parade her around as a member of a freak show. The viewers of the show naturally aren't much better. They aren't directly abusing her physically as the owner of the show is. However, when we see these men in suits observe Yuri, they all clap. They don't necessarily hate her, yet they're taking advantage of her for entertainment. Additionally, the film touches on the horrors of losing our autonomy, a common fear that comes from aging. As such, the film may be read as a commentary on either aging or excommunication from one's in-group. Yuri has lost her support network, and is completely without any help from those outside of her family. In this way, she has lost her social mobility, and cannot survive in society. More directly, she's losing parts of herself, her identity due to her legal death, her being due to the growing necrosis, and her social standing thanks to her decreased status as an outsider. As these pieces of her person are taken away by others and by her death, Yuri loses her physical mobility just as much as her social mobility. The film then seems to offer that the only way she can remain autonomous is to take her fate into her own hands, and no longer rely on others. This is perhaps the true horror of the film, as the events toward the close of the project seem to indicate that Yuri cannot truly survive nor prosper without the support of others. And given that the support has been withdrawn, she may have been given a true death sentence. 
That's just our interpretation of Dead Girl Walking, though. What do you think of the film? What do you think of its quality? And what do you think the major takeaways from it might be? The entirety of Hideshi Hino's Theater of Horror was released in the US as a box set in 2006, with English subtitles included. Today, the set is rare, but surprisingly not that overpriced for a set this large. Be sure to check it out if you're interested. And in particular, let us know your thoughts on Dead Girl Walking. Once you've given it a look, let us know whether we should cover the other five films in the set as well.